Good morning to all. All good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and see if they're smiling. If they're not smiling, it's probably because they might be missing some teeth. So just double check. I, I've got a couple tooth missing, but they put those bridges in, so I'm, I'm good. I've got, um, we got an opportunity if you would like. How many passion, compassionate people do we have in the sanctuary today? If, you, if you're compassionate, would you, rate, would you stand if you're compassionate? If you have compassion to someone. All right. Almost every one of you. All right. Some of you are not very compassionate, so we'll just pray you through. You may be seated. Yeah. And you're, they're usually the ones that uh, want us to be compassionate to them. <laughs> so I'm, I'm very compassionate. But um, you all know I, I work for a, a hospice company as a chaplain. And they asked me, and um, I got a, um, also, I don't know if you know this or not, but just within the last few months, I joined the American Legion. I am a veteran. And they do some things. Um, they had the VFW in Lake Jackson, a few other um, American legions, and I went to visit some of those. And some of them I did not like at all because um, military guys get with military guys. They, they all seem they want to puff out their chest and say, who did this and who did that? Well, I don't need that in my life. Um, I got too much flesh already, so I don't need to, to brag of what I did before. Um, so, but, um, brother Danny Aber, um, he's one of our ministers in, um, in the organization. He, he told, was telling me about the one in uh, West Columbia. So I went out there and they're very, very, um, I'll, I'll use the word humble, very humble, uh, men. And, um, I've been enjoying, um, the last couple months being a part of that. But the hospice company asked me if I could set up with them and possibly some churches, because they need some volunteers uh, to be able to go into people's homes. There's a few that are in nursing homes, but most of them go home and uh, just sometimes go and read to them or sit with them. You'd be amazed how many people that are dying by themselves. Um, I mean, I'd never realized how, um, how families are too busy. Or if you even use the, my family, um, my dad and mom both. My mom was, she was on hospice for two hours before she passed. So I guess you can't really qualify her. But dad within, um, you know, he was cutting the grass three weeks before he passed away. I think just within a few days after that, um, he got a, a part of hospice and he went to the hospice um, hospital p part and um, he died there. And um, of course, my younger brother was the only one in the town. Um, he did have a great church though. I mean, somebody was always up there, a grandchild. Um, somebody was always up there. But I think about sometimes people like that, that their families are just out of, out of town, out of state, and they're not able to be there because of work. So um, October 21st, if you'll take your what, um, phones out and uh, put down October 21st um, at 6.30. So let's say 6.15 for you late ones. 6.15, um, 6 o'clock for you half Mexicans and half white people. <laughs> and I'm looking at one of them right now from Ohio. Born in Texas, lived, lived in Ohio, so God help them. You know, those Buckeyes are just worthless, worthless nuts. But um, it's 6 o'clock, and they're going to feed you. Um, they're catering in um, Olive Garden, so they're, you're going to be fed. Um, but they're going to explain to you about volunteering. They're going to explain. They're actually going to explain a little bit about palliative care and hospice care. 
and uh, give you a little bit of understanding. I truly never really understood, especially palliative care. And if you ask me today about palliative care, I'll tell you to go to that meeting so you can understand it more. Um, but um, they're going to, it's going to be at um, um, the American Legion Post 503. It's located on 219 Veterans Park Road um, in West Columbia. If you know anything about West Columbia that has that, um, um, that uh, memorial of soldiers and has the flags and stuff, that's the same place. That's the American Legion right there. It's across the street, Sister Susie, where you um, volunteered to, to cook uh, for uh, those other guys, the veterans that were across the street. That has nothing to relate with us, but um, gives you maybe a little bit of an idea where they're at. But if you're able to be there at 6, um, again, they're going to feed you. They're going to explain. And um, I've asked Sister Anna Bergfeld. She's going to oversee it. So if you guys want a carpool or something like that, maybe she can help you with that. Um, but I would like for as many as possible go. Um, uh, Brother Johnson's church is invited, and so um, Pastor Rivette. Uh, his church is invited also, and I like to make a good showing. Here's the here's the kicker. You ready? I won't be there. Um, I will be in Finland. So uh, my wife and I will be going back and doing that. Um, um, what's that called? That prayer, prayer, what's it called? Building a room. Build a room. We're still building a room. It takes. It was two years that we've been building a room. It's been. A, you know me as a carpenter, it might take a whole lifetime. But um, we're going to be back, going back for that. And um, so it's the same um, week. And so we're not going to be able to be there. I've already told um, Unity, the hospice company, and they are fine with that. And Monday I will be telling the American Legion that I won't be there. But if you're there, and I'll mention to um the, um, that you're going to go. How many would think that you'd be able to go? Would you stand so I can give, just stand so I can give them a kind of a count. All that compassionate people, we got one, two, three, four, five, six people, seven, eight people, um, nine people, 10 people, let's say 13 people. One of the reasons why uh, we need a little bit of a number because um, they want to make sure you have plenty of food. So, um, and it's going to be good food. I mean, it's going to be catered from Olive Garden. You may be seated. Thank you. So I'm going to save 15 people just to cover that. Um, and then whatever, um, the, um, the, what Brother Johnson has and Brother Yvette has, we'll, we'll figure that up too. But again, thank you. There is a schedule, 6 to 7. There will be um, basically, um, it's really 6.30 to 7, but we'll say 6 to 7, music and dinner. Actually, I guess it is 6, not 6.30, because I'm looking at the schedule. It says 6 o'clock. 6 to 7, there's going to be music and dinner. Um, 7 to 7.15, 7 15, 15, hospice and palliative care 101. 7.15 to 7.30, what volunteers do and how to get involved. Um, 7.30 to 7.45, open form que um, questions and answers. And then 745 to 8, come and sign up. Um, and again, if you're only able to be there for Sister Lillian, if you're only able to be there for dinner, we'll go ahead and let you come for dinner. That's about the only time she comes if they got dinner. And then she leaves. But <laughs> I'm giving you a hard time. But um, through that process, so if you want to get with, there's about 13 folks, so they come see you or whatever. Um, she really doesn't know any more than what I know or at this point. So, um, and then Sister Sandra, maybe we can hang this up um, also. And I'm going to give her the schedule. I'm going to put this right here. But thank you so much. And um, um, I, I saw some folks back here praying for my wife. And I guess you all were feeling 40 years being married to me. She really need prayer. Um, that's trial and tribulations. I told Sandra, I said, my wife has gone through trials and tribulations for 40 years, but, um, but I guess I've done okay. She's still hanging there, hanging there with me. Um, we just hope it's not around her neck that she's hanging in there. 
All right. Lord bless you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Before we get started, can we do one thing? One thing. Can we get up out of our chairs? That's it. Come on, get up. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. Ones that can, you can get up and go out of your chair and go shake somebody's hand and say, hey, it's good to see you. And then when worship starts, just come up around to the front at the altar and start worshiping. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Of the goodness of God, I love you, Lord. Her mercy never fails me. And from the moment that I wake up until I lay in my head, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will of the goodness of God I love your voice cause you have led me through the fire in darkest night you were close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as my friend and I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. Yes, you have. All my life you have been so, so good. With every 
The goodness of God. I love your voice. Cause you have led me through the fire in darkest night. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God oh, all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good every breath that I am able oh I will sing of the goodness of God Of the goodness of God. One more time. All my life you have been faithful. Yes, you have. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything.
sing it with me. All my life you have been so, so good. Everything that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's shout with the voice of triumph. Has God been good to you? Come on, let's let the Holy Ghost have its way right now. The mercy, the mercy of God. If it wasn't for his mercy, I would not be here today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. While we're in the mode of prayer and worship, Sister Gail's here today, but we have been missing her. She's been very sick. And I'd like for her to stand right here. And we're going to pray for her. Pastor Diane, would you get to oil? And um, anybody else that needs to be touched in their body, touched in their mind and their soul or spirit, just come right up here. And um, we're going to lay, put anointing oil on you if you need it. Uh, come. If you don't need it, don't come. But if you need it and you're not coming, you won't get anything. But the power of the Holy Ghost is here and virtue is flowing. God can heal the sick right now. I speak healing. I speak strength and virtue into this precious woman of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, be thou healed and be thou made whole in Jesus' name. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done, Father. Let your will be done, Father. That's it. Speak it in the name of Jesus. Don't ask. Speak in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, that your will be done, Father. Set free the captive. Let the anointing flow. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, the Spirit of the Holy Ghost is flowing. In Jesus' name. That's it. Minister to one another. That's what church is really supposed to be about. Family ministering to one another. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, come on, just a moment longer. There are still people praying. There are still people praying. God is still ministering to people. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise God for his excellent greatness. Come on, somebody, praise him for his excellent greatness. There's no God like our God. Blessed be his name forever. Amen. Everybody shout praise the Lord. One more time. Praise the Lord. Now do that. Unto you be all glory and honor and praise. Praise the Lord. You can be seated. Um, I do have a few announcements this morning. Feels good in the house of the Lord this morning, doesn't it? Hallelujah. Sorry, Bishop. Um, it's that time of year again. I just wanted to bring up uh, Blue Santa for the city of Clute. Um, we will start receiving um, toys at this time, um, so feel free to bring them whenever. New, unwrapped. They have to be unwrapped. Um, also, this coming Friday at 6.30 p.m., the ladies are meeting at Panera Bread just for a time of fellowship and, of course, to eat. <laughs> and um, Magnify is coming up November 1st and 2nd. That's in this um, Bay City. Um, brother and Sister Blake um, have 
decided to hold a ladies conference there because the big district conference is sometimes hours away and it can be costly with hotels and travel and all that. So um, the Lord laid it on her heart to do it free of charge. Um, but I will say this, I am one that never carries cash but they do take up an offering during Friday night and Saturday services. And so I just wanted to throw that out there because it's free of charge for us. Why not help support them a little bit out of the kindness of our hearts to, you know, cause they have utilities and everything to pay as well. Plus bring the speakers in. Yeah. So, and we've gone the last few years and they welcome us with open arms. So yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's amazing. Um, you, I promise you won't be disappointed. Again, that's November 1st and 2nd, right in Bay City. Um, and then I have the honor of presenting a card to our Bishop and First Lady. Um, I just have a little poem I wanna read. It's called Ruby Love, cause it's your 40th wedding anniversary. 40 years of married bliss. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> right? 40 years of married bliss, your love like a ruby, shining brightly, never to miss. Your commitment to each other, unwavering and strong. Bound together forever where you both belong. Sister Smith, go ahead and come on up, please. Um, and I just want to say, may your love you shared for the past 40 years be only the beginning. All right. I said I was going to cry. <laughs> Wishing you many more decades filled with joy, laughter, and countless blessings. Um, they've been married for 40 years. We've been with them for 26 years. <laughs> so they were pretty much just babes, you know, what, 35, I think, when I started going to Youngstown Church. So um, we've got to witness, um, yeah, I wasn't going to say it, but you did, okay. <laughs> I'm older, I'm 51, I'm older than you were then, so, <laughs> so if that makes you feel any better. But <laughs> But I wanted to say that I have seen them as a married couple live for the Lord. And their road has not always been easy. They've had their trials, their tribulations, and stuff that goes on the, behind the scenes in leadership that the saints don't always know about. But their walk with God has always remained consistent. Therefore, their marriage has always remain strong and they are a very good example of what a married couple should present and I'm thankful for that because it's helped Brian and I during our tough times to stand strong when we're not sure what to do you always taught us to stand still and trust the Lord and that's exactly what we do and you know we come from broken homes but you're my spiritual mom and daddy. <laughs> and um, just watching you guys throughout the year has really shown me what a marriage and love is supposed to be. And you're a wonderful example. And I just want to say that I love you guys and I appreciate everything you do for the Rock Church. And um, I know I speak on behalf of the Rock Church when I say we all appreciate you. We see the sacrifices that are made and the work that you put in, and we are very grateful. Um, for your 40th anniversary, we wanna present this card to you guys. This is from the Rock Church. Here's the 40 more, which means uh, no croaking. Got it? God's able, sister. God is able.
I was thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. Um, this is always awkward. Uh, I'm, I'm surprised you didn't grab half of it already, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I really don't know if I want 40 more years. Not because of him, but just because I'll be a hundred. <laughs> Heaven's looking really good. Um, <laughs> but, um, oh, oh, I'm live. That's great. Okay. That's, no pressure. No pressure. Uh, oh, great. Oh, great. You bring it up. I ain't going to be here. <laughs> um, I want to say two things. One is uh, uh, that we were talking yesterday. We I think it hit us yesterday that it had been 40 years. And so can I tell you, we were just like, 40 years. <laughs> we had almost laughed at us because we kept doing that ever so often. One two of us time, would go, 40 two years. Two times older than what she was when we got married. She was only 20. Yeah, I've been married longer than I was single. So I've done past that one. Uh, yeah. Um, but uh, I was thinking, and I told him, I said, you know, I've been doing this. I, you, tell, I, you tell I'm getting older because I'm doing a lot of reminiscing and thinking of the past. And what was so funny is had Bishop, uh, our bishop had did a little uh, provoked ponder, and it says, are you going to be, is your future going to be looking back or looking forward? And I'm like, has he been in my head? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I've been looking backward. Uh, but I want to give God all the glory because I'm thinking, Oh, my word. I told him, I said, the stuff, the water that's under this bridge is just crazy. And uh, so I thank God for that because there were times that I think God just carried us through, you know, that illustration where you see one set of footprints and he's just carrying us. And, and I was like, how did, how did we get through some of that stuff? And, and it's been because of, of the Lord. And then um, I want to thank you all as a church body for your love and your support and all that you give to us. And the one thing we, we have definitely felt from you all is, is those things. And, and that means a lot. I love your prayers and need, we need your prayers. Uh, keep those up. Um, to, if, can I just be real open here? Is, is the future comes, I know that we're going to need those more. And um, I appreciate that more than anything that you could possibly ever give us. Thank you. Um, and then I want to say to the love of my life, um, thank you for a great 40. <laughs> <clears throat> I would like to mention uh, she's been close to being perfect as a wife. Um, Except for a few things. <laughs> but we won't bring those few things up because... I was to say, which woman are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, she has never given me one bit of trouble. Um, when I spoke to her one time, I said, God wants us to go to Alaska. We're living in Tupelo, Mississippi. She didn't fuss and cuss. We were figuring what size of igloo we were going to get into. <laughs> Honestly, we didn't know that Alaska looked the way it did. We thought, I mean, not too far off, wonder what igloo we were going to live in. But, um, and then, not too long after that, we'd come back and start pastoring. And then I mentioned to her we're going to South America in a rainforest. And um, she never fussed or cussed. At least not in front of me. But uh, I did, as a man of her husband, I asked God to speak to her as much as he spoke to me so it wouldn't be a total shock to her. And she never, never fussed with me. She never, even to this day, there are things that I'll say, and God's leading us to do some other things now too. And she's, um, uh, she's not fussed about that. And I, I really appreciate that. She has allowed me, and I'm going to say it this way, she has allowed me to be the head of my house. And if any man that's married wouldn't understand what I just said. Um, she's never gave me the terminology to say, well, I'm the neck it turns that head. Um, of course, uh, it's like my mother used to tell my dad all that, that time, and my dad looked at her and says, well, I could break my neck. <laughs> If you knew my dad, but um, but I've never had to worry about her uh, when I have traveled, when I've gone out, 
that she was not going to be faithful to me. And I'm very thankful for a woman that, um, in spite of her challenges with me, um, I know that this is probably means nothing to you, but it means a lot to me. She is the first woman I ever told I loved. I didn't get married until I was almost 25. I was 24, but I was almost 25. But she was the very first woman I ever told I loved. And I've given you the, the, the avenue when I did, I almost puked. Uh, I got very sick, and I thought, dear God, if this is love, I don't want it. But um, it really freaked me out. I, I've never been, you know, other, th other things I've done in the world never freaked me out like that did. But she t has taught me how to love. I had a great parents. I had no, there was hardly any females. You know, your mom's not, your, not a female. She's just another one that just beats the living tar out of you. <laughs> and, and, but um, she, um, she's taught me how to love and to forgive. And I'm very thankful for that. God gave me this precious woman. And if there weren't people seeing behind you right now. <laughs> All right, thank you. Praise the Lord for godly yeah. leaders in our life to example to us the way of truth. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Well, it is so good to see all of you today, and may the Lord richly bless you for being here. God has been faithful to us throughout the years. And I don't see anybody, well, maybe Aubrey, but she's a year old, so we can say it for everybody here. God has been faithful to us at least throughout the year and years for the rest of us. Amen. And we thank God for that. Um, we got a message on Facebook on the live message, on the live stream. Sister Rosa, who lives in North Carolina, has Sister Pastor Diane's sister, Posted on there when we were praying a while ago with the people that came and we anointed with oil. She says, I believe that I can be healed of diabetes. Does anybody believe that right now? Would you stand to your feet and would you express a word of faith for this need right now? Father, upon the authority of God's word, Sister Rosa, raise your hands right there in your living room and receive from the Lord what he has come to give. Father, it is not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. And we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, your will be done right now. Diabetes, you are not in control. Our God is in control. And so, Lord, not our will, but yours be done now. Let it be so according to your word. Again, Lord, not our will, Lord Jesus, but yours be done. And we give God all of the glory. We give him all the praise. For his excellent greatness, hallelujah to his name forever and forever, amen. Praise God. You can be seated. This morning, is I had a couple of thoughts pass through my brain, and I had thought about asking you guys to tell at least one story from that day. Yeah. Yeah, I remembered one where you guys all went to jail or something like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a bunch. But... And so, it's probably a good thing that, that we didn't ask for that to happen today. Amen. Again, let me say to all of you and our guests, thank you for being here. Lauren, it is so nice to make your acquaintance. Yeah. Amen. It is beautiful. And the dearest lady sitting next to Sister Trish, I'm sorry I did not get your name, but it is great to have you today. Welcome to the Rock Church. Amen. And looking around the room, I see some faces we haven't seen in a little while. Brother Justin, seems like you're working all of the time, but it is good to see you. Amen. And Sister Vicki, it is good to see your smiling face today. 
Amen. And there's one more, Sister Raquel. It is good to see you up and about. I know you're feeling better. Thank you, Jesus. It's good to see you. Praise the Lord. And since I'm calling names, there is one name that we haven't said across the pulpit in a while. And Corrine, it is awesome, awesome, awesome to make your acquaintance. I don't know if you remember, but Corrine came to the call to prayer. She came both nights and um, something happened and she just got stuck here. So, Corrine, welcome to the Rock Church. It is awesome that you are a part of us now. She's going to Sister Shirley's care group. Um, you're family now. Yep, you're family now. And while I'm on the subject of care groups, let me just say to all of you that the care groups that have all been started and a, a brand new one is about to start, I want you to know and remember this always, that these care groups are not optional meeting places. This is the third time I've said this and I'm going to keep saying it because these meeting places are not on Sunday morning. They're not on Sunday night. There is a group that does meet on Wednesday, but they meet here, uh, here in the sanctuary on Wednesday nights. But those other nights of the week, Thursdays, Friday, whatever nights you meet, they are not optional if you have been assigned to one of those groups and as far as I know everyone has been assigned if you're not certain of that I will help you with that even today but go join that group and go with an attitude and a spirit that this is the body of Christ we're not meeting in this building but we're meeting in places where we will find it necessary down the road to meet there there may come a day, it's very likely it could be a day where these doors are locked and we're not able to meet here. But when we have established a meeting place around the city, then we're never going to be without a place to go with the body. And here's the important part about this. Because when you go and connect with the body, you share your contact information with those people. Not so that we can stalk you on Facebook or text messages. That's not the point. But whenever a crisis occurs, you don't have to call me or Bishop. You can text the group. And those people know you. They may even know your situation. And they will know very easily how to pray for you because you're, you're a member of that group. Your heart is connected with the heart of that group. Amen. And so please, please. It is a safe place. So what we're going to find as these go forward, that you're, you're going to see a place where the scriptures will act, actually come to light. It's from the book of James. I wasn't going to, this is not my text, but it might be. Who knows? We'll see. But there is a place in the book of James. Let me see. Can I find it very quickly? Um... I'm not sure that I can put my finger on it at the moment, but it simply says, it talks about the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. But before you get to that part of the scripture, it says that it is that the prayers of a righteous man will come out of a relationship with people in your life where you are able to confess your faults to one another. And the prayer of faith would save the sick. I know I butchered that quotation but that the following verse then says that the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. So apparently there is something to do with the body and being able to confess to one another without being judged. What verse? There you go. Amen. Can we back up a few verses and read? Verse 13, is any among you afflicted? There you go. Let him pray. Is Mary, oh, I'm sorry, let me get this. I'm not going to hear Bishop in my ear. Bishop Smith, oh, that's me. Um, is any, in, um, um, James chapter 5, verse 13. 13, 
Is any among you aff afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And in the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that he may be healed. The effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. So you see that last part of verse 16 comes after the confessing of our faults. Now nobody really wants to hear all of your sins. We're, none of us are priests here. We're not here to take your confession. But we have faults in our lives and we have flaws. And sometimes we'll go so far as to call them character flaws. Right? Okay, you don't, but I do. And I have character flaws and they show up from time to time. And when my dealings with, with, with you, with people... Oh, by the way, you guys can go to Sunday school. Sorry. I totally forgot. It was, it was the pink dress, Sister Abigail. It was your pink dress. It reminded me to let you go. You know, Sister Smith, it was Moses that went to Pharaoh after 40 years in the wilderness and says, let my people go. So... Uh, this 40-year thing, I don't know. Let my people go. <laughs> so I just wanted to take a moment today. I apologize for the lightheartedness, but th there's no heaviness here today. What we did in prayer meeting earlier has, has set the tone for this atmosphere that we're in right now. So in talking about care groups, I just want you to understand the value and the importance of these groups. Amen. So if you're, if you're not sure of where you need to go, then you can see me after service. I have a list and I have the groups. And so you are going to be notified one-on-one -on -one if that's what you need. And so today we want you to be aware of where you need to be on whatever night of the week it is. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 Do you want me to read those? Okay. So just read James chapter 5 and then make some notes and write a 500-word essay. <laughs> Turn it in next Sunday. I don't know 500 words. I'm just... It feels really good up here. I'm sorry to be lighthearted like this, but it, it's, it's just very, very peaceful in this place today. Amen. And now I really am torn about what to preach because the Lord dealt with me very early this morning about something. And let me just, let me just follow the Holy Ghost for a moment here and let's see where this goes. The faith that was once delivered to the saints is active in every believer's life. And it's more active if we yield ourselves to that faith because you see the faith that every child of God has is really and truly not our own. Because the faith that we have was given to us. We heard the, the gospel. And the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? The Word of God. And so faith comes to us when we hear the Word. And so when we hear the Word, now we mix that Word with what we feel or sense inside of us because it, to every man has been given the measure of faith. So when I hear the Word, now I have a choice. 
I uh, then I can agree with what was spoken or I can reject it and go on about my business. But the beauty is the people that are in this room today have heard the gospel and your faith mixed with this faith has caused you to be persuaded that God's word is true. And so when you follow the Greek words, I'm not I'm giving you a Greek lesson, but when you follow the, the progression of the word for persuasion in the Greek, what immediately follows is the word, the Greek word that is given for faith. So I am persuaded that God's word is true, and now I have faith, and now I take that faith to another level, and that is called believing. Again, those Greek words go line by line. So what the Lord has, was saying to me early this morning is that faith in God by itself is not enough. Faith has to be exercised. We could even go so far as to say that faith without works is dead. So we can have all the faith in the world that's been given to us and all the word that we've heard and we can believe that the scriptures are true but if one never puts this into, into action in their life then really and truly what good is it? And so the value that God places on this Yes, it's the Holy Bible. This is the King James Version. And no, this is not the original text. This is a translation of the original text. But it's the best thing we've got. Right. Apparently, God saw fit to give us this. It came from the, the Dead Sea Scrolls. And so men who understood Greek and Hebrew wrote it down and made it available for all of us to have. It's no longer just chained to a pulpit somewhere in a building. Now it's in every home, in every hand. Every person in this room has a smart device, very likely. And on that smart device are more versions of the Bible than you'll ever read. But again, the point is that the Lord was making to me this morning is that without putting this word into action, it does nothing for me or you. And so because we live in the kind of world we live in without some kind of hope inside of us, Bishop, we've got no hope in this world. If it was not for the resurrection of the dead, Christ being the first fruits of them that sleep, raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, if it had not been for the resurrection, the death, the burial, wonderful, Payment for sins. He was buried. But if there was never any resurrection, then we have no hope in this world. Because the Bible does say that if we have hope in Christ in this life only, hope in Christ in this life only, he says we are of all men most miserable. Why are we miserable? Because if Christ is still in the tomb, then we have no hope of the resurrection and therefore we will be like our fathers before us and we will eventually go to our grave. Our body will go back to the dust from whence it came and then that's it. It's all over. But the hope that the Bible speaks of today because of faith in God is the hope of the resurrection. Because as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, if the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me and in you, then we know that when the trumpet sounds, we will be raised to life with Him. Right. But, but the point that the Lord wants to make today is that Faith in God has way more to do with, with my application of these words than anything else. So we apply this because now I, have, I, I accept that this word is true. I've heard the gospel. Well, I heard, yeah, I heard the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But now something has to, else has to transpire. Right. Now I need to hear the gospel. I mean, the plan of salvation. And I think for years we kind of got it wrong. Too many of us have believed that the, the, that the 
that Acts 2.38 is the gospel. We now know that that's not the truth, right? The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection. The plan of salvation is what we do with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the people that Paul was writing to in the book of Hebrews, that they were struggling with this fact, Bishop. They had been born again. They had experienced the power of the gospel and the plan of salvation. But they were struggling with, with what was happening after their conversion. It's the same problem that every person in this room has dealt with with your conversion at some point in your life. Why is this happening to me? When you go home and you get some time, read the book of Hebrews. I've said this dozens of times in, in my short ministry that the book of Hebrews is, is the case for Christ. Hebrew Christians that Theo, they're, 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 they're wavering. They're deciding if they're going to serve the Lord here on out or not. Just like you and I have all done in times of crisis in our walk with the Lord. You don't have to say amen. I, I, you're made out of the same material I am, so I know exactly what's happened between your ears because it's happened between mine, and, and we're all honest. We'd have to say, yes, that is true. Because if it wasn't in the Scriptures, then none of us would have ever had to deal with it. But because it's written here in Romans chapter 10 that people were, 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 were wavering. They were, they, were, they were teetering on the edge. They, they, were, they were deciding, uh, am I just going to revert back to my old way of life? Or am I just going to, by faith, just jump off the ledge and serve God with everything within me? I, I understand today because of the age of people and not only the age but also our amount of time that we've been serving the Lord is very different across the room. There are basically newborns in the room and there are old people in the room. I'm talking about age-wise in serving the Lord, not physical age. So we're not all at the same place, but the moment we were born again of water and spirit, Bishop, there was a target painted on us. We became enemy number one of, of the devil and his horde and the spirit that's in the, that's in the world, the spirit of the age. Because before we were born again, Theo... I, I had no enemies except God, and I didn't even know I had an enemy there because I was pretty comfortable and safe in the enemy's camp because I didn't know any better. But once I came to the revelation of this mighty God in Christ, once I came to the revelation of the gospel message, the death, burial, and resurrection, repentance, water baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, and that happened to me. I now became enemy number one, and now I wake up the morning after wondering what in the world is happening to me. Brother Kevin shared something in our care group the other night that is stuck in my craw, and I'm not done with it, Brother Kevin. God's talking to me about those words. But the Apostle Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 2, he says that we were called to suffer. Yeah, yeah. You, you, got, you, you had the same response I did. I heard that, mm. But the fact is, Lauren, is that if I'm not suffering for the gospel's sake, there might be a problem here. So the, the Lord wants us all to come to grips with the reality. If this is as far as I get with this, this is fine. The message has already been stated very clearly. The just shall live by faith. And faith says that God is who He said He is and that He will always be what He has said He would always be. Therefore, God cannot go back on His Word. 
if he does go back on his word, then he ceases to be God. And that's not possible. So for some of us in the room today, it's time for us to come to grips. It's time right here, right now to make a decision about whether or not you're going to serve the Lord today and for the rest of your life. What does it mean? I haven't done this in a long time, okay? So that means I'm almost done. I'm hungry too. I want to go to lunch. We're not leaving until the Lord is finished with what he came to say and do. The truth is today is that you and I have, have faced situations. We've had hardships. We've had trials. Some maybe in this room have even gone without, perhaps. I'm a child of God, and it says I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. What does that mean, Sister Annie? It means that no matter if, if there is no food on my table right now, that in, 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 a, in a period of time, depending on how long he decides to wait, there will be food on my table. The scriptures are true. I have. The psalmist wrote, I have never seen the righteous forsaken. Why? Because if God is your Father, if you're alive, you had a father in your life, whether he was good or not. At some point, you had a roof over your head, shoes on your feet, food on the table that a father provided for you. So when we come into the kingdom, why do we suddenly shift in our belief that, that our father will always provide to, well, I don't know now. If God is your father and you have been born again, God is your father. The church is your mother. Jerusalem is the mother of us all. The church, Jerusalem from above, that's us. That's the church. God instituted this. God created the, the last Eve. Do we need to go back to Genesis? The church is Eve. Jesus Christ is the last Adam. The church is the last Eve. He's our husband and we are his bride. And so the bride and the groom come together and children are born. So therefore, if God is our Father, God, the Spirit, manifest in flesh in the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? He's one and the same. God, he's a Spirit. He indwelt the man Christ Jesus. That's our Father. So if God is our Father, then why do we question or doubt His ability to supply? We do it, Sister Jean. We do it regularly. I'm not here to shame anybody because I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with the same things you are. I'm preaching to the guy in the mirror back there because the Lord is working on me the same way He's working on you. But Lauren, God is my dad. I'm not being disrespectful. He sired me. He deposited his seed into the church. And I was a product of God and the church. I came out of that union. So God is my father, Sister Brandy. And he has promised, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll never leave you destitute. I heard it. But why? Why, Pastor? Why do I have to suffer? Because God doesn't have spoiled brats for children. God sometimes disciplines us and He uses the man of God to do it. Correction is wonderful when it's done in love. Hello? Well, I thought I was almost done, but um, I may have to drop the plow and go around that stump one more time. That's not original with me, but I like it. God is my dad. And I will never 
be left destitute and alone as long as I stay in contact with my dad. That boy in Luke, Theo, who left his father's house and went and wasted his father's substance on riotous living, he found himself destitute and hungry with no roof over his head. Why? Because he wasn't with father. The father didn't stop him either. He gave the boy what he wanted and let him go because that's what, that's what our father, our heavenly father will do for us. He's not going to chain us to a pew, to an altar and say, you can't leave. He's not going to take away our ability to choose, our, our free will to choose. Well, it's, it's a will and we can choose. I don't know how free it really is. Because when we choose wrong, there is no free will. You're still bound in chains because of choices. But the point today that the Lord is making to us is that when I come to my father and I say to him, okay, dad, I'm returning to you. I'm coming back to you. I'm recommitting my life to you. Here I am. I know I wasted your substance on riotous living, but I want you to be my dad. And so what does he say to the boy? He doesn't, he doesn't speak to the boy. He speaks to the servant to go get the robe and the sandals and the ring and put it on his hand. He welcomes him back with open arms. Doesn't shame him, Sister Emma. He doesn't lamb blast the boy because he made some poor choices. The fact that the boy came to himself in the hog sty is, is what made all the difference in the world. That's called repentance. And when he got back home, he made that known to the father. And the father didn't even have to say, I forgive you. He just told him what to do for the boy. Is anybody listening right now? Yeah. Sister Raquel, he didn't ask the father to forgive him. He just said, I was wrong for doing what I did. It's simple repentance. It's simple obedience to what the scripture tells us that if we have made choices, cherish, to walk away from dad. Yeah. Hebrews 10, 35 through 39. That was going to be my text this morning. These people are teetering. They're wavering back and forth. They're double-minded at this point. They're unstable in all of their ways. And they, they want to serve God, but yet the struggles and the trials in their life, the pain, the hardship that's in their life has become increasingly worse and worse. Right. If you study the book of Hebrews, these were Hebrew Christians. These were Jewish believers that had been born again of water and spirit. And their Jewish brothers and sisters were persecuting them mercilessly because they were not worshiping according to the law anymore. Right. When you read through their, the writer, we believe it was Paul that wrote that letter, but he tells them, if you go back to that, there is no more sacrifice for sins. Yeah. You can offer all the bullocks and the lambs and the turtle doves you want, but they don't mean anything anymore because the law was nailed to the cross of Calvary. Right. Jesus took all of that out of the way, became a perfect sacrifice. So if you go back to that, he said, you are apostatizing. Can I just tell you, that's not backsliding. That's worse than backsliding. That's denying the faith. I'm just going to leave that right there. I don't think there's anybody in the room that's at that, at that applies to, but you need to know that that's in the Scriptures. Right. But the point that the Lord wants to get across this morning is that if you have put your faith in God at least once in your life and you came to an altar, repented of your sins, you were water baptized in Jesus' name and you were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, that faith that you exercised then is still in you. Some of you may have been lied to. Some may have been told that that faith is gone. You might as well give up, throw in the towel, go, go do what you want to do in the world and just live like you want because you're going to hell anyway. If you've heard that lie, if you've heard that lie, then you need to know it's not from 
heaven because the Lord doesn't take his spirit from us. That child, that prodigal son that we call him bishop, he was still a child. He was still a son of the father. That never changed. The only thing that changed was fellowship. And the Lord is, is really changing this as we go, as we get to the end of this. Somebody has been listening to a voice you should have never been listening to. You have exercised that faith once in your life, at least once. And you came because of the gospel. You obeyed the plan of salvation. And you were filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And I keep saying it because I want everybody to understand what has truly happened when you exercised your faith in God. That faith is still alive in your bosom. And what the Spirit wants to do, He wants to... He wants to blow across those coals that are still alive in there. You're here. You're here this morning. This is no accident that you are here. The people that are here are here because of faith in God. And if you are here, the Spirit is... Oh, Jesus. It's here. There is a call, get off the fence. Get off the edge, one way or the other. You can't be caught between two opinions. We're not like Elijah on Mount Carmel with the Jews. And they're, they're, is Baal God or is the Lord Jesus God? They're, they're back and forth. They can't decide what they want to believe. And Elisha says, look, Elijah said that day, he says, look, you've got a decision to make. How long are you going to halt? How long are you going to be crippled between these two opinions? If Baal be God, then go serve Baal. But if the Lord be God, then you need to make it all your heart and soul to serve the Lord. And when they said, we will serve the Lord, that's when the fire from heaven fell and consumed the sacrifice. And they said, the Lord, he is the God. So the point, Sister Shirley, come play something. I'm, I'm, I'm stopping. Because the spirit is stirring right now. Somebody needs to respond to the call. You need to stop asking why. You need to stop questioning God about his faithfulness to you. Stop it. He can't be anything other than who he is. God is love. His nature cannot change. He cannot go back on his word. And if you need to pray right now, don't wait for an altar call. It's open already. If you need to be here, you need to come to this altar right now. Because the Spirit is drawing and pulling at people in the room right now. You've, you've, you've wavered too long. It's time to decide. Today, here and now, before things get unimaginably worse in the world, while there's time to settle some things with God, it's time to do it. Come on, if, you, if you've never experienced the power of the gospel, we can help you with that too. But if you, you've already believed the gospel and you've obeyed the, the plan of salvation, Acts 2.38, it, it's, it's okay because even then, even then, our faith wavers. We don't all do it perfectly. No, we don't do it perfectly. If you think you do, then you're, 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 you're lying to yourself. We don't do it perfectly. But the fact is, the grace and the goodness of God that they sang about a little while ago is what's pulling at us right now. If it was judgment, Pastor Diane, it would not, we, would be, we wouldn't even be in the presence of the Lord right here. There's no judgment here. Your peers out there will judge you. Your family will judge you. And some religious circles may even judge you. But in this room right now, we are all on equal footing at the cross of Calvary. Not a single person in the room can say you've done it all right. We, we, we look different. Some of us are dressed different. And, and some of us may have 
How dare I say it, Father? Some of us may have the marks in our body from our worldly lifestyle. You know, that only matters to the judgmental and the hateful. Those marks don't matter to Jesus. Then he would not have said, Barb, whosoever will, let him come. He would have said, you can come, but you can't. You can, but not you. You can, but not you. No. He doesn't do that. Jesus said, if any man, if any man thirst, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And out of his belly would flow, flow rivers of living water. Come on. Is there anybody? There's no shame here today. There is no shame in this room right now if you need him to help you with a decision about whether or not you're going to serve him all the days of your life. You need to come. You need to be here. But I've served the Lord for 50 years or 60 years. Does that matter? What does that matter in light of eternity? It matters not. It matters not. The only thing that matters is what we do with the moment that we've been given. How I respond to the word of the Lord. How I say to him, I've got faith. You gave it to me a long time ago. But now, I feel the wind of the Spirit blowing across my dormant faith. Apparently, there's a coal left in there that's not died completely. There's still life inside. Let him blow. The spirit is blowing on some, on some fires. It's not out. It's not out. Come on, church family. I see what you're doing already. That's beautiful. You're, you're already doing what you, what you know you're supposed to do help those people today that may feel as if father doesn't care about them anymore you've sinned too long and now there's no hope for you that's a lie from the pits of hell come on i need you to keep praying look around church look around who's down here Who's, who's praying right now? Where, where are they in their life right now? Where are they in their walk with God? Come on. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to look around at, at, fa at people's faces and see where they are right now. The love of God needs to flow through us. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord. No, you look at me. It's okay. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that's it. Come on. Love on these people. Love on them. Let them know that what's being spoken right now is love at its finest. I know you've been hurt. I know you've been wounded. And I know you may even have church hurt. But the truth is, there is love flowing. There is spirit Come on, let him resurrect that fire in you. Let him restore hope to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, come on, there, there's, only, there's only hope and love. There's only peace here. There's only the work of the Spirit here. It's not judgment. If you've got sin in your life, he said, if you'll repent of it, he said, I'll take it on to judgment. I'll judge your sins now. And when you arrive at the judgment, those sins won't haunt you there. Come on. Let Him have them now. Whatever it is you have need of this morning, the power of truth has come to, to relieve you of this burden, this lie that's been told you. The Spirit has come to relieve you of this and say, I love you. I'm calling to you, my child. I believe in you. I've given you my spirit at least once in your life, so therefore you know I love you. Return to my love. Return to me. He's calling you his love. In the name of Jesus, 
Come on, for a moment here, we must touch the throne of grace. It doesn't have to be loud, but it needs to be forceful that we're involved mentally and emotionally. That we're involved in all spirit, soul, and body. We're involved in all aspects of our being. I've got to walk. I've got to lay hands. I've got to pray. The Spirit will do the work when I take my body and I move, crucify the flesh, and I move to somebody. Then I let Him flow through me. Come on, that's what we're here for. We're here for one another. We're here for the Spirit to help somebody off the ledge. If Baal be God, serve Him. But if the Lord, thus one true living Lord, if He be God, then serve Him. No more wavering. No more.